Stacey Abrams is under fire by ex-staffers and the media after her second failed run for Georgia governor against Brian Kemp. According to Axios, most of the 180 full-time staffers were given an abrupt paycheck cutoff date, which was a week after the midterm elections. One staffer told Axios, people have told me they have no idea how they're going to pay their rent in January. It was more than unfortunate. It was messed up. Campaign manager Lauren Gro Wargo confirmed to Axios that the campaign still owes more than $1 million to vendors. So this hmm. is fascinating because as we've covered, I mean, her campaign was not hurting in the fundraising capacity. No, it was raking it in. These were some of the most well-funded races in American history. Well-funded uh, losing races. Well, <laughs> losing races. And of course, we covered on the show the large sums that she was also able to raise to, you know, um, ha inst institute some of these cases about election fraud in the last race and how those legal cases ended up not going anywhere at all, despite raising well, no, millions right. and millions of dollars. And potentially there was some, at best, bad optics of her paying that to a law firm that was run by her former campaign manager and a personal friend of hers. So being awash in money at the same time that you're getting these kinds of critiques from your staff is not a good look. I will say that it does seem to me, I have not, you know, I have a relatively limited experience working on campaigns. It does seem to me that to have a, a cutoff date about a week after the end of an election seems mm -hmm. kind of typical. The Bernie campaign was an outlier insofar as he paid our health insurance into, until the general election, which is obviously, what, six months or so after the end of the campaign. But that was a, a novelty that came out of, I think, the negotiations of us having the first uh, union in the history of a presidential election campaign. So it'll be interesting to hear more from this to see if this is a nothing burger or if there really is some mismanagement here financially. What do you think about still owing a million dollars to vendors? I don't know how, I, I, I have no idea how typical that is to still be on the hook for things like that. That seems to me to, seems to, me to be the biggest. seems like deal. a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, to owe, I, I to owe hard vendors, to owe hardworking people. Yeah. I mean, businesses, I have, I have small heard businesses. stories like this before. Yeah. Bloomberg's campaign in particular, I remember a lot of stories coming out because he had promised folks, I mean, because he's one of the richest people in the world. Um, the fact that he had promised his staffers to be paid, I believe, through the election as well, and completely reneged on that promise left a lot of people high and dry. Um, so these kinds of things do happen. And unfortunately, it does seem to be like there's this weird correlation between people who actually have a lot of money and their inability to actually follow through. What is it they say about rich people? They got rich by you know, being mm -hmm. stingy and not, and not wasting money, as it were. So maybe that's part of what's going on here. But you know, it does seem to be particularly disappointing when it's coming from someone who has presented themselves as a more progressive person, as someone who cares about the interests of poor and working people from a state where people are disproportionately lower income but doesn't have as high a minimum wage as other states and has all of the other attendant problems that you often see in kind of the South the southeast of the United States. Do you think States. Stacey Abrams' star is finally falling? I'm seeing a lot of uh, this is you know very critical reporting of her in the in the mainstream media, Axios, Politico, etc. Um, I, I guess is she still being treated in a very heroic way mm -hmm. on on MSNBC. I think. Yeah. Uh, but maybe that's starting to shift. I will say that you sometimes don't hear stories like this when there's a collective interest in protecting the candidate. And right. I know that there were these moments, I mean, there were plenty of things that a lot of folks could have complained about on the Bernie campaign that we just didn't want to rock the boat because we felt like there was so much bad press, unfair bad press right. anyway, and we believed in the mission. And I do think that you can start to intuit that when you hear more stories like this, it might be because increasing numbers of people, frankly, don't believe in the mission and don't want to protect Stacey Abrams at the expense of them not getting paid, for instance. So I do think that you could potentially read something into there. However, as long as they've stretched the potential of her being a real political player, I wouldn't be surprised if they still continue to, to try her out. And look, I think that she could do a rebrand. She could do an honest reassessment. I think that she has a lot of talents. I've said this before. When she first came onto the scene in 2018, I actually thought she did a really good job of running a campaign that spoke to all Georgians and wasn't overly focused on identities that uh, uh, issues that get coded as identity politics issues. She had a much more inclusive approach, and I, I, I would love to see her return to that. I think she has a lot of potential, but if she continues on this mm -hmm. path, 
I, I personally am just not seeing and it. And she's lost twice now. At some point, you just you have to deliver, or you have yeah. to let someone else try. Yeah. Look, the, the thing about being in Democratic Party politics is that there tends to be a landing zone for you. And it's the same if you're a, you know, yeah. a mainstream Republican candidate. There's a million think tanks you can sit on. There's lobbying firms you can work for. You can go in-house at a law firm. This is what all of these people do, right? They try, they fail, they get put in a holding pattern to be, you know, Take, taken out and used in the future if need be. They take care of their own. Especially if you're a proven fundraiser, the way Stacey Correct. Abrams is. There's Correct. always a, a job for you. Correct. But it's, it's very difficult for other kinds of candidates. You know, people yeah. who've worked for progressive campaigns don't have the same cushy landings, not to mention the principles. And I'm sure that libertarians and other kind of outsiders, people who probably worked for Trump, had some difficulty mm -hmm. finding them, their path again um, outside of being self-financed and writing books and doing things that don't rely on being a part of a machine that buoys you. Yeah. It's, it's well, there's a, there's a Trump machine, too. There's a, sure. you know, like Carrie Lake was is just speaking at, uh, I, I saw <laughs> her speaking at, I, I think, the Turning Point event, yeah. you know, to, to saying that she actually won, that she's, yeah. she's the governor of Arizona in her own mind, just like President Trump is right. the president in his mind, and, right. and to wild applause, to screaming, celebrating, clapping. I, you know, maybe it's not the same kind of soft landing right. that well, the that establishment the right. can engineer for you, but yeah, you can... There's you can so make money, money that money. way. Speaking fees, book fees. You can, you know, she can angle for some kind of television presence yeah. on some kind of very Trump friendly. Well, that's back to her roots. Yeah. Yeah. I, so. I remember I had a conversation. Um, you can lose with and Ryan, win with Ryan Grimm once when we were both at the Intercept together, and it was I think after the 2018 elections, and we were kind of miffed about how when the progressive candidates fail, I mean, there's just nothing there mm -hmm. for you. There's not piles of money. And, you know, ideologically, we're opposed to those kinds of resources to be funded in those ways. So unless you can get like a Verso book deal, you know, mm -hmm. which is not going to give you the kind of payout <laughs> as, as these like mainstream publishers, you're just kind of stuck. And the people who are running these progressive races are often you know, like single single mothers and, you know, un former union guys and, and things like that who, who can't fall back on their law firm salaries or whose parents weren't senators the way that you get in mainstream politics. So there's a lot of dysfunction in the system. So I'm, I'm, I'm caught between like being happy that there's some institutional resources for some people who run, but disgruntled that it's not um, an even slate and that some of the best candidates don't get the second, third, and fourth crack at the apple that mainstream Democrats and mainstream Republicans get. Absolutely. All right, we will have more rising right after this. Stay with us.